Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable, we have almost all the usual suspects. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm great. Good to see you. We've got the most feared woman in the country, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? I'm doing great. I get to sleep in a little bit in the morning because I have to take my daughter to school. Digging coronavirus. <laughs> I, look, it's the little things, Mimi. It's the little things. There you go. We've got the Zen master. Breathe in the mailing. Breathe out the marketing. Mike Zeno. Mike, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Saving lives? Are you at the fire station right now? No. no. I was there yesterday. I'm home now. All right. Great. Great. We've got, I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you? I'm doing well. Really well, actually. Business as usual. Great. Great. Um, if you want to see how Tate conducts his business, go to thelandgeek.com forward slash lots, L-O-T-S. Look over Tate's shoulder. And last but not least, your flight school Sherpa, the brain, the professor, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net landmodo.com. If you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Um, we do need to give some love to our sponsor this week, and that is Flight School. Today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can start your own business Start creating passive income without renters, without rehabs, without renovations, without rodents. As Mike Zeno would say, compress five years of what it took me into 16 weeks. So, I said so, four. Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> I said four. I didn't want to hit you that hard. Four years. Come on. Yeah, but it was really five. But to learn more, go to landgeek.com forward slash training. Get on a call with the Zen master, Mike Zeno, or the nightcap OG, dude buddy, Scott Bossman, and see if this strategy is right for you. So before we talk about our topic of the week, I just kind of want to go around and get take everybody's land investing company's temperature. So just see how was the week for you? Are you seeing any changes? What's going on with in the midst of a global pandemic? Um, Eric Peterson, how are things at Landopia? Things are fine. Um, mostly business as usual. Um, I did have my first default as a result of the virus this week. Um, so as I've talked about before, I've definitely had a few people reach out and ask for um, reductions in their payments or no payments for a period of time. Um, so I am seeing some effects um, from what's going on in the rest of the world, but um, you know, I, the property that, that I took back, um, it's one that's going to sell pretty quickly, so I'm not too concerned about it. Um, we're still selling property. Our last sale was um, just a, a small cash sale, um, nothing too crazy. Uh, we bought it for about six hundred, uh, sold it for nineteen hundred, um, and yeah, I mean, things are going just fine. Okay, great. Zen Master, how about you? Yeah, no, our business as usual. We, we did have one person that wanted to uh, restructure their payment based upon what's going on, but actually we're just, we accommodated her, but we're going to make a lot more money as well. So I call that a win. win. Um, currently got a cash sale, $2,000 acquisition selling for about 8000 So that's not bad. That's um, the person opted to go through a title company. So that's processing through a middle of, I don't know, wholesale and a bunch of properties right now as well. And regular set. So um, it's going well. Um, no complaints, just marching forward. All right. Uh, Terrace Hunter, Mimi Schmidt, how about you? I have had one person that paid me $50 for one month. So I've reduced her payment and another person that's skipping a month, but otherwise everyone's still paying. Um, I had a sale fall through. I had a, a guy that had purchased for me before that wanted to buy a second property and he, he was buying it for his son. He and his son got laid off on Friday, so he didn't buy it. But 
my Facebook poster had collected a down payment on the same property this weekend and I had to send the down payment back because <laughs> I was going to sell it to guy number one. So I just had the woman put her down payment back on it. Hers expires today and I have a third guy that'll buy it if she doesn't buy it. So it's all going to work out. It was just, I did have someone that lost their job. Um, and that one I bought for 2,600. I'm selling for nine on terms. So I wish I had more property in that county, right? Prices were getting kind of high there for me, but I had some mailings come back really strong. I feel like the shake in the economy is making people a little nervous. So I'm having my mailings are coming back a little stronger. Um, I do see more cash, it, more cash uh, in, my, in my sales still. Um, and then on the buy side, I hate to go back, flip back to that again, but I am having older people that are a little apprehensive about, about getting the deed signed. So it's taking a little long for me to finish up paperwork. Makes sense. Makes sense. I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate, how are things going with you? Uh, things are going well. We've had, um, I've mentioned this before, we've had a couple people contact us and they just wanted to make some adjustments to their monthly payments and we were happy to accommodate them. Um, truthfully, I haven't seen a lot of um, fallout from the virus yet. Um, I would say our number of leads that we're generating on a weekly basis is pretty consistent with you know pre-COVID. Um, the number of weekly sales we're having is, you know, really good. Uh, last week, I think it was, or two weeks ago, we had a really amazing week, uh, moved double digit properties, which is pretty awesome. Um, but we've kind of dropped back down to our comfort zone of a handful a week and we're happy. Uh, things are going well. And if we do see some turnover, it's probably, you know, somewhat related to the virus, but I think some of it is just to be expected too on those notes. All right. Fantastic. Scott Todd, how's your business? 12, man. The number 12, 12 sales in the last seven days. We've had 12 sales in the last seven days. Five, five of them were on, I'm sorry, four of them were on Friday alone. So four on Friday, uh, one early Saturday morning, it was hit off the website and, uh, but 12 sales in last week, cash collections is up 12%, uh, over last month. So I don't know, man, things are strong. Landmoto page views are up. I don't know. People are looking for land. People are buying land. It's the craziest thing. I mean, I think economically it makes sense when you've got volatility in the stock market. We've, I've talked about this a lot. There is always going to be a flight to real assets, gold, silver, real estate, raw land. And then you've got people that want to have an inflation hedge, raw land, gold. So I think that's how we can explain it. But if you've got money, you, you want to put it in something real. You don't want to put it in the bank earning nothing. So I think, I mean, I could be wrong, but I think that's what, the story is, I mean, Tate, what, what do you think? Yeah, no, that's just it. Um, people are, are, are nervous about some of the other investment opportunities out there and raw land has never looked better. So um, most of the deals that we're doing, we're not spending a ton of time figuring out why people are buying it. We're simply happy to accommodate them and take their down payments and dock fees, get them under contract and uh, let them go on their way. But uh yeah, it's been a pretty, uh, pretty amazing run. And I've actually heard from several uh, of our coaching students. I heard from uh, Jeff Detmer today. And let me see if I can find his Vox that he sent to me. Um, he said, sold another last night. This has been the most incredible two and a half weeks for my land business. So uh, I think that goes to show you that it's a good time to be a land investor. Or is it, Mark? Well, that's going to get to, us, to our next topic. Scott Todd, what, what's your thought on well, this? i one more thing. Like, I can tell you that the Landmoto Sunday Blast is over the last, since the pandemic hit, double, double the people are doing the click-throughs. Like, the click-through rate on that email is double. So, but, that's pretty cool. Right? People have this desire for land. It's pretty cool to see. Yeah, there's, there's a lesser land in the country. Eric, what were you going to say? Well, I just wanted to add too, like 
as I've been talking to my students over the past couple of weeks, um, I have just seen a lot of sales um, for our students in the community. So it's not necessarily just us saying that, you know, land is still selling well, but I'm seeing it with our students as well. No, oh, absolutely. And, you know, another theory that I heard was if you're stuck at home, you're more likely to open up all your mail. Where if you're super busy and you get, you go to the mailbox and you see something you don't recognize, you might be more likely to throw it out. And also if you're stuck at home, you're more likely to spend more time looking for assets that you like. And so, it, you know, again, these are all theories. I don't really know, but then again, I don't really know about anything any of anyways. So, you know, like, like if anything, I'm certain I'm uncertain. Certain I'm uncertain. I'm certain I'm uncertain. That's the only certainty I have in life. So, Scott Todd, let's, that leads us to the next roundtable discussion, which is? Should you be quitting? Should you be throwing in the towel? Should you be like, you know what? People aren't opening my mail because they're not going to go be able to go get a notary. So I'm going to stop my mailings. I've seen that comment in the Facebook group. I'm going to stop my mailings because people aren't responding to me. Or uh, you know what? I just lost my job. So I'm going to have to like stop doing everything. So should you be stopping everything now? Is it too late? Or should you keep going, growing, and working to build that passive income? Eric, you just lost your job. You're scared. You got an uncertain future. You're, you're spending money on your land investing business. You're not seeing immediate results. Is now the time to start going on to other podcasts and be like, screw it, something else. Or just start looking for another job. I don't know. I think, um, yeah, they should totally quit and sell me all their land <laughs> because I want it. Um, no, but in, in all seriousness, uh, absolutely not. I think this is the perfect time to be a new land investor. I mean, when, when have we had such opportunities to sell this property so quickly? Um, I mean, I, like I just said minutes ago, I am seeing my students just sell property so fast. I have a student that sold uh, like five to six properties in the last 10 days. Um, you know, and a couple of weeks ago, you know, it was just, just a couple here and there. So I think that the market of buyers is, is really ready to buy right now. So if you have inventory, get out there and, and spend your spare time and market it and find some buyers because people are buying. Yeah. And to Eric's point in the beginning, don't sell to Eric if you are ready to hang it up. Go to <laughs> sales at frontierpropertiesusa.com and just attach your list. We will buy all of it. Um, Mimi Schmidt, what about you? I hear about all of these people that are now claiming unemployment and all of the speculation about how high the unemployment rate's going to be. It's going to be 16%. It's going to be 30%. All those people that didn't have a job, I'm sitting right here in my house with my job, right? But I can't think of a better place to be but to be an entrepreneur with my own business, not depending upon an employer. Right. I think it's the best time to start a land business or to be in the land business. Um, and people, they're at home on the Internet. They're not only on Zoom. Zoom isn't the only thing that they're using. Right. Zoom's crashing. It's got so much activity. They're all over the Internet, which is where we're selling. So I, I, I it seems like the perfect time. To me. OK, um, I really thought you were going to be self-serving. And you'd be like, absolutely, they should quit. And <laughs> they should quit. So forward and forward their land to me. Yeah. Um, Zen Master. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Mike Zena, what do you think? Is, is it a good time? Come on. No, Ma, on. come on. Listen, it's a buying frenzy out there right now. I think, honestly, this is 
sort of depressing times for people. And when people get depressed, they do a lot of things. They, they shop. I know it's been like uh, Christmas around here. The Amazon truck comes every day. And I got in on that just today. I, they finally showed up and the girls are like, oh, I don't know. This is for me. I'm joining on this Christmas parade. It's Christmas every day around here. Amazon truck keeps showing up. I think people like to buy things. You're looking out your window. You're in isolation. What better thing to dream about than land? It's like when I get out of here, I'm going to go and I'm going to own my own piece of like. So I think Scott just mentioned a double, double the uh, opens on his emails. I mean, people, people are dreaming and we sell dreams. That's what we do. We sell dreams. Uh, people are going to go out and they may use their land for this dream. They may not, but we provide them with the opportunity. So if you're going to get out now, that's crazy. I mean, so is that what like, coca-cola or somebody would do if you know something here they're just going to call it we know we're land sellers professional land sellers we're not going to throw the towel in and i was laughing because i you always end that joke with screw it i'm gonna go to etm investing but we've already talked about that in another podcast can't do that <laughs> yeah we got to pick on another niche um <laughs> yeah. so no don't get out come on be, but uh hey I'll, I'll i'll jump in on the bandwagon i'll take your land yeah so, uh, okay I mean, so if you're looking to get out, you've got a, a, a ready market for your land right now. You could just flip wholesale. But um, Tate Litchfield, in, on, in all seriousness, though, what do you what do you really think? You know, I, I don't. I I would plead with you not to give up. I would plead with you to stay in it, give it some more time. I understand, you know, that you might be in a difficult situation. Please don't stop your mailing. Please, please keep marketing. Do not exit this world because you'll regret it. You'll regret, regret selling those assets for the same price you paid, right? This business is too good not to double down in it and, and really push through these troubling times. Um, I read a quote and it was like, you know, you got to take action when there's blood in the street, even if that's your own blood. And I think everybody is feeling that we can sit on this podcast and we can say, Oh, Scott had 12 sales last week, but you know, there's certainly going to be a time when Scott Todd is going to be saying, dang it, we haven't sold anything right now. So, and when that happens, it would be interesting to ask Scott, Scott, are you scared? Are you nervous? What's going on? Are you firing everybody? But for right now, Scott's happy, but there will come a time when, we're all on the ropes a little bit. And I'm promising right now that I'm going to suffer. it. I'm going to suffer the joy. I'm prepared to endure some pain. And if you're enduring that pain right now, you know, know that there is a light at the tunnel and we will get through this, but please do not exit the land business. It is too good of a marketplace to run away from. There is no competition here. If we're doing it, if Mike's doing it and Eric and Mimi and myself and Scott, we're all selling land hand over fist, you can too. So, you know, don't, don't give up on it yet. If you're short on cash, know that there's opportunities out there for you to double your money. It might not be a thousand percent on your money, but hey, hundred percent on your money sounding really, really good right about now, especially when the stock market's going up and down and the cost of a barrel of uh, oil is what, zero dollars right now, the futures on it. It's crazy. So land is where you want to be. Trust me. It's yeah. Uh, I a hundred percent agree with everything you said, but you know, who might be irascible, difficult, uh, wants to play devil's advocate is going to urge everybody to get out. Now is the time it could be Scott Todd, Scott Todd, what's your, what are your thoughts? <laughs> but I, I'm not going to take the bait. Like, look, I think the thing is, is that, yeah, we're in scary times. Okay. Like no one, no one has gone through this. No one, no one's gone through it. You can say, well, what about the people? Well, even back in the 1918 pandemic for the Spanish flu, I read an article the other day that said that the president at the time, uh, I think it was Roosevelt. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. I'm just, maybe it was Hoover. Hoover. I'm gonna go with Hoover. Okay. Hoover, who is, can someone tell me who the president of 1918 was? Anyway, whoever the president was, he did he not serious. even talk about the, the Spanish flu. Like the president of the United States did not even address it. There was no like, okay, everybody can go into quarantine. There was no plan. Like you were just going to die. If you got it, you were going to die. And that's just the way that it was. Was it Hoover? Wilson. Wilson? Woodrow Wilson. Oh, okay. As we're, we're, you know, 1919, we're entering World War I. Are yeah, you sure so you like, read an article? 
yeah, yeah, I read it, but I skimmed it, like who the president was. I'm like, eh, okay, whatever. Anyway, thanks, thanks, Tate. That's that's the old Scott Boston slap right there. But whatever. All right. So, so then, oh, he's not even here. See, okay. So it then, <laughs> nobody even talking about it. No one's even talking about the Spanish flu. So now all of a sudden we have the coronavirus. Everybody's like, shut down every business in the world. Look around. Everybody needs to stop and look around. They need to stop what you're doing. Literally, go look around. Go look at what's still in business today. These are really the essential things. Like, I mean, if it's still in business and still making money today, it's essential. So don't stop. Don't get paralyzed in fear or all these things. What you need to do is you need to start hustling, figure out how to make some money and build some passive income because Look, even if I didn't sell anything for the month of April, passive income is still going to sell me through. And there are people that are saying, oh, well, you know, I just only want to do cash deals. That's great until the cash deals aren't there anymore, right? So like build a note portfolio, let the mailbox money come. You'll be thankful that you did and do not at any cost, do not sell any of your land to any of these other chuckleheads on this call. You come to me. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to edit that part out. And um, <laughs> oh. it, it, what we're going to do is we're going to dub um, sell all your land to the chucklehead, Mark Podolsky, at <laughs> sales at frontierpropertiesusa.com. Mark, Mark doesn't know anything except he wants to buy all of it. That's the only thing you want, you know, right now is like, I want it all, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I do. But, I, but you know, but Scott had a really good point. Um, it's, you know, I mean, like one of the company that he used to work for laid off how many people, Scott Todd? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like, here's the thing, the company that I used to work for before I got laid off four years ago, four years ago, this month, actually four years ago, they just announced that they laid off, uh, 10,000 people, 10,000 people. That's half the workforce. So half the workforce is gone. And I look at it, like, I'll tell you what, for the last four years, I've been like, well, you know, the, the whole what if, what if I had stayed, yeah, I have a great life right now, but what could I have done with my career over there? Or, you know, like, I, I do miss the big people I used to work with, by the way, you know, like, that's that whole thing. But, I'm offended. Um, half of them are gone now. <laughs> I probably would have been gone now. Like, that's the thing is, I would have been gone. And then I would have been kicking myself for the last, like, oh, I didn't build a passive income for the last four years or five years. And then I would have been in the same boat that I am today. So take action, right? The only people that you can really count on is yourself and figure out how to make money and lands one way you can make money. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, you know, Mike Zano always says, what, 10 years is coming, whether, what, what is the quote, Mike? Yeah, and it just reminded me of that when Scott said that because there's definitely somebody else out there that at the same time Scott made the decision to do it, made the decision not to do it. And they're probably doing that, but there's still a good time to start. And it's when I asked the Tai Chi guy, I'm like, listen, how long to get good at Tai Chi? It's like 10 years. I'm like, oh my God, 10 years? He's like, 10 years is coming either way. So these four years are only difference is you're good or you're not. And so the four years are coming anyway for Scott Todd. So there's a there's another person out there who exactly at right on that same time probably was considering land investing and said, eh, I'm going to pursue my professional career. And, and they, they're probably on the other side of that right now. But guess what? That person can still come here and do this now because four years from now is coming either way. Yeah. I mean, I, I've never really worked for a big company, even, even small businesses lay off people. And I mean, it's just one of those things like, to have a job, I think is inherently way riskier than it is to own your own business. So even if you have a, a good job right now, or you had a good job and you might be getting it back, it's still always a, a great idea to be that pig that builds their house full of bricks, have that side hustle that you, so you're not ever depending on a job. And so when Scott was laid off, he was like, ha ha, I already replaced my income anyways. So Great. Um, and I do like referring to Scott Todd as a, as a pig that builds his house full of bricks. <laughs> don't, wow, don't judge. Wow. wow. I, I, feel, I feel like between you and Scott Bossman just slapping me around and Tate slapping me around. I look, 
It's okay. It's all right. I told I'll Bossman not to do that. I said, that wasn't a good idea, Bossman. He's not going to forget that. Oh, and true. you guys can this tell him. True. He's not even on this call, and I have not forgotten. I will get him. <laughs> I will get him. Maybe Revenge. that's why he's not here. He knew you came locked and loaded, and he was like, nope, maybe he'll forget by next week. <laughs> yeah. It's a dish best served cold. So um, we are now at that point in the podcast where we get to put the Terrace Hunter Mimi Schmidt on the spot, ask her for a tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. Mimi Schmidt, what do you got? So every, am I, no, every time I do the flight school office hours, and then when you, you and I, Mark, had done the Facebook Live, I have all kinds of people telling me that they are switching to follow boss, right? And I think everybody on the call is on follow up boss except for Scott Todd, right? So no, I think Scott made the, the move. No way. Did you? Scott Everybody's Todd? attacking him. Everybody's Did attacking him. Did you make the move to follow up boss? Did I? I don't know. Did I? Why are you being cagey about this? I know. What the heck? Come on. Bernie doesn't work on a surface, so he probably can't. <laughs> Listen. I didn't, I did uh, dip my toe in the follow-up boss uh, water there. It's nice, yeah, it's very nice. Oh, you're not gonna give it up. Anyway, they have a great blog, HubSpot does too, but uh, they have a great blog. This particular post is about uh, winning at your first call. So we get so many questions on what to say, right? When you get people on the phone call and talk about how the way you sell is on the internet is with phone call. So it's great. There's all kind. They even have live ones. I think there's two live webinars this week alone. So um, use use the information. It's a great resource. All right. We'll have a link to uh, that tip of the week. And so I thought this was a really great uh, roundtable podcast. And again, I want to thank the listeners and remind them the only way that I can even cajole Scott Todd to come back on another roundtable podcast. If you do us three little favors, you got to subscribe. You got to rate, you got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the uh, $97 wholetailing course, how to double your money 30 days or less. Um, I do want to give a shout out to Nightcap and Fortune 500, Matt Forbes, uh, the Zen master, Mike Zeno and uh, the nightcap OG uh, dude, buddy, Scott Bossman. If you guys have not been watching nightcap live, it is a great way to get distracted, um, have a cocktail with the guys and also to learn a little bit about land investing, get your land investing questions answered. And I think Mike, you, you would agree that I think the most entertaining part of it is watching Scott Bossman's speech devolve from the beginning <laughs> of nightcap <laughs> to the end where he's literally just slurring his words. Well, I would be careful because I've had my, my time in that situation, but uh, we, we take turns. So one person's always in control. <laughs> it's very true, but you know what? It's a, it's a lot of fun. F U N all in capitals, but a lot of content too. So join us. It's uh, it's every uh, typically every Wednesday night. Uh, at 10 o'clock Eastern, correct? Yes. Yep. Seven, seven o'clock Pacific, 10 o'clock Eastern. And uh, come on, bring your questions. Uh, we'd love to interact. Yeah, absolutely. So um, speaking of Fortune 500 Forbes, I have to give him a, a shout out. Um, he has shamed me into upping my podcasting. Uh, and he literally said, Mark, you sound like crap. Go get a new mic. I got the Joe Rogan mic. Hopefully everyone can hear the difference um, because I can't, but hopefully everyone that's listening can hear the difference. If, if you can go ahead and uh, email support at the with the subject line. Thanks, Matt or fortune 500. Um, we'll do a drawing for a free investors toolkit um, that Friday for just leaving us that comment. Mike Zeno. Maybe we could just ask who sounds the best audio wise and let them, let them guess who has what mic. 
Okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and leave a comment. Who right now do you think sounds the best? Testing, one, two, three. Testing, Testing. one, two, three. That's I feel like Maybe we should go person by person so we get the, get, they can hear it. Okay, ready? Let's all say siblings, siblings, siblings. Eric Peterson, go. What? 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 That's, no. that's how you test the mic. No. What does no. it mean? You say, you say, like, say your name, and then, like, they will tell us. Fine. Eric, go ahead. Eric Peterson. Ooh. Tate. Tate Litchfield. <laughs> Mimi. I can't stop laughing. Mimi Schmidt. Mike. <laughs> Mike Zeno. <laughs> Scott. Scott Todd. And Freeland. And finally, the one that I know you all are going to like the most. I'll put on my Terry Gross voice. Mark Podolsky. You know, support landgeek.com. Let us know. Um, thanks, everybody. You guys ready to go? Do, do this? One, two, three. Let right. freedom, freedom ring. ring. And, of course, and wash your hands. Wash your hands. All right. So um, I got to tell you, I, I had a, uh, an interesting, like I did a Facebook Live yesterday with Bossman. I compared the quarantine to listening to a Coldplay album for me. It's terrible. Just awful. No, no, no. So in the oh. beginning, like you hear it, you're like, oh, this isn't so bad. Right? It's like, you know, in the beginning, the quarantine wasn't so bad. Like we're having family meals. Oh yeah, homemade. And, oh yeah. Yeah, my wife's cooking more. Exercising um, more. Exercising more. There's like all these benefits. You're like in Coldplay, the first time you listen to them, amazing, right? But by the third time of listening to the same album, all the songs start to kind of sound the same. Hmm. Yeah. And you're like, does every meal taste like meatloaf now? <laughs> no, no. It, it, it's just that I, I, I'd like I'd like a little bit more variety than just being in the house every single freaking day. Yeah, I'm going to run out of shows to binge watch. What, what are you watching now, Mimi? Oh, I'm finishing up Outlander season five. They, there's a new season of Bosch I'll be starting and just finished Ozark. Oh my gosh, it was so good. That means there's going to be another season. I think, don't you think? Oh, there has to be, absolutely. And Scott Todd, aren't you supposed to have like a picture of you outside Carol's gate by this week? Oh, uh, yes. I don't know. No, no. Isn't Florida open? You can go anywhere, can't you? Yeah, I can pretty much go anywhere I want. Yeah. So, well, so Scott, I can't, hold on, hold on. I can't go to the city park like Tom Brady did because he got cited for being in a public park that was closed. Welcome to Tampa, Tom. Wow. <laughs> that really happened? Yeah. Yeah, it happened. Wow. Wow. Don't, like that don't that would never park. happen in Massachusetts. I can tell you that right now. Tom Brady is a freaking hero. <laughs> he might have ripped their hearts out, but so what? He brought a lot of love and joy to that community. He would never get cited in a park. Are you kidding never. me? Never. We're too wicked smart for that. No, that's an attack. That's an attack. An attack? Yeah, on Tom, right? Yeah. Not, not the Boston accent. Okay, good. No, no, no. That was perfect. Pocket and unpocket. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Eric Peterson, what about you? What are you watching these days? We've been watching uh old series of Survivor with the kids. They just got into Survivor recently, so um we've been doing some of that. Nice. Um Zeno. Uh <clears throat> Get Shorty, the T V show. You can binge watch three seasons. It's it's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. Nice. Tate, besides Einstein videos. Uh we're watching 
I don't know. I, I started watching the uh, Netflix documentary uh, season two on the Formula One race in, which is pretty interesting. It's pretty cool. All right. Very cool. Um, all right. Well, Scott, what if I just started the, uh, the podcast like, hey, all you cool land geeks. Oh, boy. You want to lose people? Like, you know, cle clearly she is the most hated person on that series for a reason. And, I mean, you know, you just want to be the most hated person on this podcast. I mean, that, that would be one way to do it, I guess. Yeah, I, like, like everything I watch now online, it's like, hey, all you cool cats and kittens. And I, I, I always think, like, you know, I just feel like a bond to that person. Like, we have that Tiger King thing in common like i get i'm in on the joke hey wait a minute we have a problem i just realized i've been doing this podcast on the wrong microphone and like i just changed microphones and i think we tell. have to go back through and get our check on the microphone no no that's done tell me no, the wrong no rolls are in You've already submitted your name. It does Didn't sound that great. I'm on the wrong microphone, guys. You guys only can't do this say, to me because, like, you say this similar, is the this is. is the wrong microphone, and like, this is the real microphone. So this yeah, is that, Scott's that's like recording. that's like you know Mark, going golfing and having a bad shot and just say I, I'm going to do a do over here. I'm going to do a do over. A, no, Mark, did you just I, order I a like new mic down because we yeah. on the call? Scott, we played for keeps me. in this business, uh, and uh, you're late. But, but Scott, how, how is this remotely my fault? It's all your fault, man, because we did another podcast earlier. You didn't say, hey, your, your microphone talent's terrible. It doesn't sound terrible. with this thing, asking if I sound better. No, it, like, it, did, it, sound it didn't sound terrible, and, and clearly- you set me up. That's you're going to find- to sound right better, there. Scott. He wants to sound he just, better. He's got he a just new conned mic. me, man. I think he conned me. He Scott, knew this was going to come down today. You know I'm a raging narcissist, and it's all about my mic. Like, you think I'm thinking about your mic? Jeez, Mark. Do I sound better now than I did? Yeah, but we're, we are picking up some stuff. Like, Eric, what's – he's got, like – his gain is too high. I think that you was think when so? he was on the wrong mic. We could hear his garage door opening. That's the problem. That's how I knew that there was a problem, because I was seeing stuff going. I'm like, where's the, where's the crisp working? Like – Jeez, mm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thanks, Mark. You really didn't sound. You really didn't sound that much worse than you do now. Oh, thank you, Scott Boston. I mean, Mark. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Scott is developing quite the reputation. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm. Uh, wait, Scott Ty, what are you watching these days? Uh, so we just finished, uh, let's see, we just finished, um, well, we, okay. So last night we finished Better Call Saul. We got caught up to that. So we got, we got caught up on that. We have been watching, uh, Good Girls. You guys seen Good Girls? It's an NBC show. It's pretty good. Uh, so Good Girls, we have, so we're caught up on that. We, started watching the boys your recommendation the boys on amazon what prime what do, you, what do you think you know i don't like those types of shows and I, for whatever reason i like this one my wife's like yeah i'm on the fence a little bit we've watched i think four four episodes of it um so she's on the fence i'm like let's keep rolling i like it um I'm trying to think there was another show that we just finished as well that um uh, so Better Call Saul and Good Girls. I think that's it. Yeah, it's. I mean, the oh, boys. Oh, uh, little fires everywhere. We're we're watching that one too. Wow, never. What is that? Never heard of it. On Hulu, I think. Little fires everywhere. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, I'm gonna pull Eric Peterson. I'm just reading. That felt that felt really good, by the way. <laughs> I'm just reading. No, I've, I've been watching, I finished Better Call Saul. Um, I, I honestly, like, I didn't think I would like the boys, but my buddy was like, dude, I'm not into superhero stuff. You're going to love this. And I really, I did, I did love it. I can't wait for season two of that. And um, I've been watching a lot of Ugly Delicious. 
with uh, David Chang. I'm, I'm getting into those like those food shows. Yeah, I'm, I, I do that on, uh, what's it called? Uh, Disney Plus, you can watch uh, the one with Gordon Ramsay. We started that last night. It's actually pretty interesting. He went over to Peru in the Sacred Valley and ate a bunch of stuff down there, made a nice meal. I like the cooking shows. Yeah, I, I, there, there's something about people devoted to their craft. And I talk to my kids about this all the time. I'm like, you know, there's there's a theme in Japan. Jiro dreams of sushi. You watch these cooking shows. Some of the best chefs are in Japan. They they are just so obsessive, compulsive, devoted to their craft, and it it shows up in in the quality. I mean, it's it's there's a reason that we always are talking about kaizen as it relates to land investing. It's continuous improvement. So. Um, you know in Japan that it takes 20 years to become a master tea maker. I mean, talk about devoted to a craft. 20 years to make freaking tea. Wow. I still haven't gotten coffee down, so I sympathize. Oh, I, I actually got a stag kettle, Eric Peterson. I'm upping my Chemex game. All right. I finally. What is uh, it? It's like a, it's like one of those balanced kettles. Like you can, you, you can put the water over the Chemex evenly. Awesome. And it's, yeah, I think it, curve spout this on, sounds right? all French. This is another it, level. It's, it's definitely yeah. another level. It's very, it's very like I'm devoted. Now the only last, the last thing I need to get is a scale, but I haven't gotten it yet. Mimi, me, me, what's that look for? That's funny. We could have our own it's coffee great. kettle within the group. Yeah, we could do like that the too. Master coffee maker. Good stuff. <laughs> look, look at the confidence brewing from Eric Peterson right now. He's like, yeah, bring he makes it. Makes better coffee. Yeah, he's 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 better at Peloton than me. He's better at making coffee than me. <laughs> he's better graphic designer than me. It's probably. No. I mean, I can tell just from like the YouTube videos that his kids make. He's a better father than me. <laughs> <laughs> it's just annoying there'll be something gotcha. there'll be something eric well whatever okay yeah. um thanks guys i got a whole other whole other uh series of issues i gotta discuss now all right i'll see you guys thanks guys bye, bye.